Since its inception in 2003, Steam now holds over 50,000 games. Some are a collection of talented creators' life's work, others being a side project that caught traction for its novelty and a bit of luck. Alternatively, you do also have greedy developers choking the last dollars out of a once-loved franchise, and I don't even know what the fuck this is. But I digress. Within this vast library encompassing over 40 years, I want to touch on a few gems that, no matter how ugly they may look with the brutal gaze of hindsight, a fan base maintains. Games such as Gothic, Pathologic, and Fallout 2. There are plenty more to name, but the common thread being they have high praise and are seen as better than recent releases even while containing ugly graphics and are chock full of frustrating elements such as poor controls, terrible UIs, and glitches. What about these games allowed them to overcome these seemingly necessary elements? And conversely, why do games that have a hundred times the budget with comparably way better graphics get such terrible feedback? Well, if we take a look behind the muddy graphics, clunky inputs, and dated interfaces, there lies fantastic stories, amazing OSTs, innovative gameplay, and a disturbing atmosphere. Games previously didn't have the privilege of powerful hardware to craft their ideas to, so you needed creative solutions from talented developers to make it work. And you got plenty of that. Take Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines for instance. Released in 2004, it has garnered tons of critical acclaim and has gained a cult following even with it being plagued with issues such as choppy animations, poor audio, and awful gunplay. This is because it places such a strong emphasis on player choice allowing tons of solutions for quests and giving us an impact on how the story will continue. Surrounding this is a unique atmosphere and mood that is rarely seen in other titles. Throw in some great writing and you got yourself a classic. What we can learn from titles like this is above all, if you have great writing, storytelling, and an emphasis on not what the player has to do, but what the player can do, the odds history will look kindly upon your game is high. Games today can hide behind beautiful engines, polished menus, and a bullet point list of talking points, something previous titles didn't have the luxury of. So while the graphics and amount of content in modern titles may be breathtaking, if at the core of your franchise is a cliche story lacking any replayability, nobody will care. So then, if we have this precedent set of what gamers tend to love, why do so many modern games forego these great qualities in pursuit of goals that baffle even the greatest of minds? I mean, what the fuck is games as a service? Oh, that's right. You mean unfinished shit that I pay full price for and will never get fully developed because the player base dies from lack of content? What the fuck is this piece of shit? <laughs> or how about them re-releasing classics, and even with the full game already created for them, with their maybe being all left to do, you know, update some textures, fix some known bugs maybe? No. They somehow take a fully made game and break it. What's this, you fucking piece of shit? Why did this regression happen? How are companies so out of touch? A good heuristic if you can't understand the motivation for something is to follow the incentives. So let's do that. Baldur's Gate 3 stood out as one of the top choices in numerous lists highlighting the best games from last year. Praise for its storytelling, player choice, and world building, having a rich and detailed world that rewards exploration with hidden quests, secrets, and lore to discover. Wow, I'm blown away. Seems like we have a winner. It ticks the boxes many classics of the previous generation did as well. So, how were they rewarded for this? They pulled in a hefty 209 million. Not too bad, huh? Well, a game just three years ago saw profits that nearly doubled it, pulling in a staggering $370 million in 2021 alone. What masterpiece could be behind this success? Raid Shadow Legends. Yep. So the best game of the year that took six years to develop wasn't close to what fucking Raid Shadow Legends made in one year. Yeah. This goes back to incentives. 
Why would modern devs put time and effort towards something when they aren't rewarded for it and cheap shitty ransomware can print money? Because at the end of the day, behind each of these projects are mouths to feed. I mean seriously, imagine if you could put out clearly unfinished projects and people get mad, but still buy it. Whatever incentives you create, the vast majority of titans in the space will follow them for monetary gains. You will also have the modern day Diogenes who couldn't care less about any of that and blaze their own way, crafting innovative projects in the process. But that's rare. Think of the combination of factors here. Someone who isn't guided by money, is talented and creative, has the means to take those ideas and implement them, and actually puts in the work and finishes before the unpredictability of life could hamper or even ruin his motivation. And even then, what's to say you would like it? Most people in any field maintain the status quo by following the structures laid out before they entered it. It takes a one in a million person and odds to overcome what is already set and transcend that with a great project. Games today suck because the incentives suck. And until we get the Albert Einstein of game creation, nothing will change unless the incentives do. So how do we change those? Can we influence them? Perhaps you think all this criticism might cause a shift. Gamers will say enough is enough and stop giving the companies the heaps of money they want for terrible projects. And you would be right. In the long run, gamers will get sick of these fly-by-night game studios who only look to leech off the market with unfinished, pay-to-play, microtransaction-filled heaps of garbage that won't have an active player base two weeks after the release. But they also won't care. Most people only buy a handful of games per year, so a company's job isn't to cater to the fans' taste, but in essence, to trick the world into being one of the three games they buy that year. As much as Ubisoft and EA fucking suck with their terrible consumer practices, their stock price tells a different story. And that's the only one they want to hear. I mean, look at Rare Studios. They have been the force behind many of the greatest games to have ever have existed. And now, they're behind Sea of Thieves. Markets follow incentives given by consumers, and right now, as depressing as it might be, the incentive is to pump out another Madden or Skull and Bones, then craft another cult classic like Far Cry 3 or Mass Effect 2. Games aren't fun because they have no reason to be, and companies like Nvidia aren't gonna suddenly be nice and lower their prices for GPUs since their stock is almost a thousand dollars a share while fucking their customers' wallets. EA won't give their developers time to craft unique games filled with lore and great gameplay because Madden makes them billions. And no, they won't care if you don't buy their games because plenty of others are. But it's not all bad. Companies like FromSoft do exist that buck trends and put a ton of effort and love into their games. Elden Ring made me tear up at moments from its breathtaking landscapes and challenging fights, and they did get rewarded for it. Elden Ring sold 23 million copies and made around $1.4 billion. But just understand that Candy Crush, a free mobile game, has made over 20 billion. I don't want you to walk away from this video with some doomer black pill mindset. The dedicated, motivated, talented, innovative developers are still out there with the same genius that crafted Half-Life 2 and Fallout New Vegas into must-play experiences. Modern gaming may be in a state of disarray caused by a thousand ugly incentives, but just like those names in history we still tell stories of that went against all the social norms of their time, I'm hopeful such people will come around in the gaming industry, caring not about how much money they can steal before we figure out they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, but instead wanting players to have good memories inside the beautiful worlds they craft, leaving us with a few more replayable classics. I'm Hang with Thirst, and fuck microtransactions. Slow down, we should tell me that before I get the room to jump. What the hell is this? Come on with it. Switch off all the
<laughs> Look at him. He just gave up. <laughs> he dropped <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Bro, this is funny.